Welcome back to my channel. I am making my daily salad here, which you guys probably see on my Instagram. And I figured it would be a good time to kind of just chat and update you guys as I make my salad. So today I'm using some of the vegan chicken fingers that you guys probably just saw. And they're warming up in the air fryer, which is nice because by the time that they're done, I'm finished assembling my salad. We'll see if I get distracted by talking though. But truthfully, this is like my favorite way to have all the nutrition that's combined in the salad. It's just through like a big, chopped salad. I love chopping it. I think you guys saw last time with my scissors because it makes the bites just super easy to eat, which is funny because I went out to eat recently and they gave me a salad that wasn't chopped. And I'm like, I feel so messy. How do I eat this big ass leaf? You know, like it's just a huge bite. So I've been a little spoiled by my salads. By the way, the way that I do this is I choose my greens. So this time I have a, it's a 50-50 blend of baby spinach and lettuce. And then I also have extra spinach and then this micro kale mix. So I always just add all the greens first and then I'll usually go into the vegetables like a pepper, some cucumber, and then some fruit like strawberries, blueberries, kind of whatever I have on hand. Sometimes I'll do apples and then I have some pantry items that are always staples inside of my salad. Usually that's something like some sliced almonds, Brazil nuts, some date rolls. I love the ones that are rolled in coconut. My goodness, you guys need to try these. It's like dessert. Pumpkin seeds, uh, tomatoes, beets, and that makes up a delicious salad. But you guys, you can literally throw in whatever you feel like throwing in. Just kind of make sure that it has a base of the greens, the veggies, maybe a little fruit, and then some healthy fats. And then whatever protein it is that you would like. I also have this, it's sun-dried tomato, like turkey breast. So I thought about just chopping up a little bit and putting it on top as well. So it's not really a vegan meal if I add that, obviously, but um, sometimes I do just the vegan protein, which I really come to love. So on my last video, well, I think it's two videos ago now. I shared a little bit about my health journey with you guys because that was inspired by some conversation that I had with Jess, my assistant, and a client, Doreen, who really said that people do want to hear about this side of my life as well. And you guys really responded on that video. It kind of shocked me with the amount of comments and responses that I got. If you guys are interested in seeing this, some of you are going through it yourself. And I would say, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, tell me like exactly what you're doing or exactly who you're using and things like that. Guys, it's not a one size fits all. Our health journeys can and most likely will look completely different. So if something that I share helps you, take it. If it doesn't help you, if maybe it hurt you in the past, like a method of dieting that I'm doing or something, that's okay. You don't have to use it. But I, I would say don't generalize things with people. Don't say that, oh, because it didn't work for me or it didn't work for, you know, someone that I love that it's horrible for everyone. Be open-minded. Like we all respond differently to different things and that's okay. Okay, so I'm taking my certain method of what I'm doing right now. If this doesn't work for me, then that's okay too, and I'll, I'll change it when I need to change it. I'm very um, just open in my strategy with all of this because my main goal is just to get healthier, and I honestly don't care how I do that in the sense that I, I want to do it naturally right now, but I don't care if it's intermittent fasting or if it's gluten-free, inflammatory, or low inflammatory food diet. You know what I mean? Like whatever it is that's going to get me healthy and feeling great, that's what I'm going to do. So I encourage you guys to do the same. I encourage you guys not to judge yourself or others for what you're doing because honestly, it's your body, it's your health, and you deserve the right to make whatever decision it is that you wanna make about your health. So I'll do my best to share what I'm doing. I'll do my best to share what works for me, but at the end of the day, what works for me may not work for you, and that's also okay too. We can still be friends, no matter how you diet, no matter what foods your meals are comprised of, if you're vegan, if you're pescatarian, if you have a meat subscription to one of those uh, meat delivery services. I love you all the same. I don't care what goes inside of your food. But that's one thing that I loved about my, it was actually the last video of the grocery haul of all my girls, is that a lot of us kind of eat similar, but we also had some difference in opinions. Um, you know, we have one friend who's full on vegan and like, What's great about her is that she has never judged me once for not being vegan. And I can't tell you how nice that's been. I think just like anything, there's just some people that judge a lot or like make, you know, want to shove their method down your throat. And then there's others that are just like unapologetically themselves and really loving and accepting of other people. And I think that's really beautiful and it's really just something that I value and cherish in my friendships in my interactions, even in my online family. You know, I really appreciate when I get those DMs from people who are like, 
hey, by the way, we don't agree at all politically or with our beliefs in God or, you know, our, our beliefs in family structure. But I just really get inspired from your posts and I love your positivity and I love that you're spreading love and all this stuff. And I'm like, you are somebody I can get behind. Like, you are somebody that I full on just respect so much because it's, it takes a big person to be able to respect other people's differences. And I think that's something that we really need more of in this world is people that are willing to have conversation with other people that are completely different from them. They think differently, they operate differently, and yet they're still able to shake hands at the end of the day and walk away from that smiling and still friends, you know? The world needs more of that right now, more than ever. So the salad looks like it's almost complete. It's looking so delicious. I'm so proud of this. I'm always so proud of my salads, and it's so funny. I'm not really sure why, but anyone that's watched me assemble a salad, which is maybe why I did this now, they are like taken back by it. When my friends were here, they were like, wow, this is like a process. And I think it's probably because when I do it, you know, they're all talking and I'm just quiet, and I'm just like, enjoying it because truthfully along with the healing journey I'm really focusing on self-love and I know it seems silly maybe to people but this is part of my self-love like taking time to create a healthy nutritious meal for myself that really is gonna make my body feel alive from the inside out it really is just a form of self-love and I feel so proud because it looks nice and aesthetic but it also just nourishes me it sustains my life it gives me life it, it brings me just more energy more focus I feel great my digestive system is doing really well right now I don't know it's my little form of self-love self-love can be whatever it needs to be for you. It doesn't have to be always bubble baths and face masks. Though if you know me, you know that I love those. It makes you feel like a damn queen when you're in the bath, all the bubbles, little face mask on. I did get a tip on my Instagram. This girl was like, just so you know, all the candles that you have around your bath, if they get into the water, it's like you could burn yourself. She said there was somebody that got like third degree burns by the candles from her bath. Like they tipped over and like the flame went insane. Sorry, this self-love just went dark. <laughs> but just be careful because I always have candles everywhere. So be careful if you do that. Let's check on the chicken. Ooh, it actually looks perfect. Yes, okay. So we shall add our little chicken. Mmm, that looks so delicious. So I will be back because I clearly have to take a photo of this delicious looking salad. And then when I'm back, we're gonna chop it up and chat some more. Okay, so we have our salad. I got the Instagram photo, insert it right here. Dressing, very important touch is the dressing. This dressing is delicious. I found it at Sprouts, which is just my favorite place to shop. I think one of the reasons why I love it here so much is because it's never busy when I go and it's so clean and just perfectly organized and it's such a nice, calm experience. Whereas before I was going to an HEB around the corner. An HEB in Texas is great. Everybody will tell you that you have to go to an HEB, but I will say that not all HEBs are created equal. And it was always a very stressful, very packed, very like frantic environment. And I just wasn't for it. So I'm really glad that I found my grocery store home. <laughs> okay, so it's roasted garlic vinaigrette. And we're just going to do this. There we go. And I forgot, usually I chop it up and then I add that, but it's okay. And that's not bad. I mean, for assembling the whole salad while talking. So I guess another thing that I could update you guys on is just my diet, what I'm doing with that, and where I'm at competition-wise. Because a lot of you know that I was in competition prep at the beginning of the year. Obviously, I'm not right now. And where my mindset is, is I try to never make lifelong decisions, especially when I'm in a hard moment. So this would be considered a really hard moment in my competition season and journey and career and so I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm never competing again or you know try to put a timeline of I've got to compete by this time that's not the focus right now so what I'm trying to do is just be really present and in my present moment my main goal is just to get very healthy get all my levels back to optimal ranges and then once I'm there I can decide and go from there I've learned very quickly like not to try to plan out my life so it would be really easy to go through this and think like oh I'm never gonna compete again but honestly if I did that I would just be very sad because it's been such an amazing 
goal that I've had for myself for so long. So I'm not saying no to it. I'm just putting it on pause while I take care of the first priority, which is my health. So to other people out there, you know, that are going through this, never say never. And don't put all the stress on yourself to like have everything figured out right now. Just because you're having a hard moment doesn't mean that you can't, you know, revisit something later. So I hope that kind of puts your mind at ease and also just encourages you guys to be present in whatever season it is that you're currently in. So identify your season, be present in it, and give it everything that you can because the season will change. And when the season changes, you'll have the mindset, the capacity, the health, the everything to then make a decision. So I'm going to go eat this and then I'm going to share the rest of the day with you guys. We have a really cool podcast interview today that is kind of like a spontaneous cast. And so I'm excited for you guys to kind of get an insider look on that. If you guys don't know, I post all my podcasts on the podcast YouTube channel, which will be linked down below so that if you love hearing the podcast, you can actually watch it on YouTube as well. And I made that separate YouTube account for that. So it's linked below check it out make sure to subscribe to this channel and then to that one and i'll see you guys after my salad Benny, say hi to the people say i love to sunbathe it's my favorite to so just come out here in the backyard get some sun have a few yawns look at that smile my goodness Benny's like it's not my smile mom i'm just hot <laughs> I wanted to show you guys i got some patio furniture i got a little grill i got uh Cornhole, if you guys know what that game is. Usually it's set out, but I had the yard guys come. But check it out, I got this from Lowe's. The little mat I thought was so pretty with the little reds and oranges. And then this big umbrella, which is great for shade, obviously. And these chairs are some of my favorite because they bounce. I kind of wanted something that was like really just an easy way to relax, you know? And I like that you can like lean back in them, they bounce a little bit, so it's nice. And this is a very low table. I don't know why I like it's just it makes it super chill. Okay, so I'm beyond excited for today's podcast interview because I had the idea of creating a podcast with my dad on our What's Up Doc series around spirituality and helping those that are just now getting into their spirituality in their first steps and kind of just tackling some of the bigger questions and things that they have with first getting started when there's somebody that doesn't have much experience in this realm of life. So today I'm facilitating a conversation between my dad, who you guys know as Doc, Doc Hayden, who has been walking with God for more years than I I've been alive and another friend you guys will meet in just a moment who kind of just started getting into their spiritual life and used to be completely against it had a really bad experience in the church and just with religion and just kind of has been through the ringer when it comes to all that stuff so I figured how cool would it be to have my dad who's been doing this longer than I've been alive come and be that voice and then to have somebody who's at the beginning of their spiritual life to come and ask those questions live because we've had these conversations individually and I was like man there are so many people people that I know will relate to this. So I really think that this conversation is about to be something really, really special. If you guys aren't subscribed to my podcast, make sure to click down below, subscribe to the podcast. It's on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, everywhere that you can listen to a podcast, it is available. And it's this one's probably, I think, going to be my favorite episode. So I'll update you guys after and uh, hopefully you got to listen to it or watch it on YouTube. <laughs> Did you guys carpool? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I like, pull behind him, I'm like, I'm shoving my finger like, pull over! You know, and he's like, Truck. He knows me too. Oh god. So I go, come on! And you know, he's freaking out, man. He was falling out of the I don't I exist apparently. You. I, <laughs> <was> <laughs> I love that you came prepared with food. This is right and after. Carrots. I got food again. <laughs> Guns, foods, carrots, we're in a good Vitamins. Hospital. Acid, but not the kind of acid you're thinking. Acid for food. So I'd like to officially shake your hand now. Yes. It's nice to meet you. It's an honor. Hi. Oh, hi, oh, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Wait, hey, you do. Oh, Hello. Know. We're not gonna record like you're a tripod. I was like, I was to you. I've got my yeah, Boston and the Brit tea. Sure. You know, of course. You know, the end one or the. What do you want? These two right here. Okay. And that belongs to your daughter. You've had that your whole life. And that's the part I would say. Forget about the good man, we all screw up all the time, but mm -hmm. dude, I can tell instantly, I know people like the back of my hand. Dude, you have a heart of gold. Thank you, I appreciate yeah, that. you really do. Damn, that's just a big compliment because he meets a lot of people. Since we're just being blonde, I mean, I literally get paid a lot of money to tell, especially a lot of men, by the way, you're an asshole, stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I really do, and then they're like, wow, you're brilliant, thank you. I'm like, you're <laughs> welcome, I guess. That'll be $250. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today I am training shoulders on the newbie fit machine with Patrick. Patrick is local to Houston, so we've been doing some training sessions together. We did glutes the other week, I posted on my Instagram, actually and today we're gonna do shoulders it is raining today so we get the nice uh, humidity thank you Houston Texas it feels like a vibration 
I'm a little scared to change shoulders with this. There's nothing worse than feeling like a little pinchedness, <laughs> being like, ow, ow. But <laughs> like, give me some weights. Intensity, nice and slow. And then in between sets, we're going to go just against the parent. So it has been a little over a month since I have had coffee. I did no coffee, no pre-workout, and no caffeine really, except for a little bit in my tea for over a month. So here I am having a cup of coffee with my Silk Dairy-Free Almond Creamer. And then also I love putting First Forms Collagen in there. The French vanilla flavor is amazing, and so is the chocolate, but the French vanilla makes it like a nice coffee creamer. If you do the chocolate, it's kind of like a mocha coffee drink, which is delicious. I will say now that I'm back to my coffee, one change I've made, <laughs> please don't laugh at me. I really had a problem, and this is why I stopped. I considered this a cup of coffee like I'm not joking like that was for me so now when I make a cup of coffee in the morning I use the single serve and I literally make one cup this is actually my second day having coffee but I didn't film the other day so the coffee is delicious I'm enjoying it in moderation if you guys have had way too much caffeine recently I urge you to consider a caffeine reset give your body no caffeine give it a break and then when you want to reintroduce it have moderation with it moderation is cool guys let's make moderation cool okay because <laughs> it's healthy it's good for you and this collagen by the way is incredible incredible for your skin, hair, nails, your bones, your joints, and it's a collagen with Dermaval, which is really important because a lot of collagens don't have that. So if you guys don't have a good collagen in your life, get some of this. I really encourage you to do it. I think it would be great for you. It's weird, but I've actually noticed new baby hair growth on my hairline. I'll have to maybe film it for you guys and show you, but check it out if you're looking for a good collagen. I highly recommend this one. I'll link it down below for you. In the studio, hello. This is my studio setup. A lot of people don't realize how tall this table is. It's like a bar. So it's really tall, I love it. But here I just recorded for my podcast, uh, some Monday messages and also some mid-roll ads that I'm adding into the show for my coaching and mentorship program. So I'm really excited about that and it was a little difficult because I'm a little congested. <laughs> so I had to do it a few times. These were not one take wonders. I finally got to the one take, but it took me a few takes. I'm done with that, gonna head downstairs. Jess is here downstairs, I believe. So I'm gonna go see what she's up to and get rolling throughout the rest of the day, the work day. Before I was like, oh, like, you know, maybe I can create this crazy crazy connection or create those moments that I have had with him where it's like insane connection but now I'm just realizing like someone mentioned it the other day they were like God's grace and his presence is a gift it's not something that you earn and so I think yeah. I'm trying to realize that like no matter what I do I can't create this crazy God moment like if he wants to give it to me he'll just give it to me then in an ordinary day sometimes something pretty crazy can happen I try to ask myself like what is my part in that and like is there image management that I should be doing so that who I actually am is portrayed on social media you know what I mean because like here's how I think about it some people portray an image on social media on purpose and that's not who they are that's not me obviously like I am who I am but if what I am doing is creating a narrative that is untrue about who I actually am is that then my personal responsibility to try to cultivate the image of who I actually am in real life because here's where I'm at I've never once had somebody in my reality in real life ever question who I am to different groups of people like I've never Never had a problem with it in my life, but I have a huge problem with it online. Then I'm like, is it my personal responsibility to manage that image to show what people in real life actually experience? Even when you're your best self, you're gonna have groups of people that hate you, and they're 
purposely there to stop you. Now, occasionally, if God says, Emily, answer some of the haters, do it. Okay. And then you step away from it, don't get totally involved. Now, the yeah. second part you're discussing, to me, it's two separate issues. Okay. The second part you're discussing, am I putting out such good professional work that they're missing the heart of me? Yes. So what's happening, they're not detecting my true nature because of how I'm putting it out. It's so professional, so well done, that maybe I'm missing that part of me that sparks people to see that there's more to me. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I don't think it's the professional side of me. I think it's the personal side of me when I enter either how I feel on a subject matter or sarcasm and humor. Like literal jokes that have nothing to do with reality right. that people take so seriously. I think we all have a great example. Donald Trump in office, he must literally, God must have like a steel plate around his brain. He does not give in, be you, and fuck everyone else. If you chased your tail like that, yeah. constantly reevaluating, yeah. and how am I coming across, what are you getting? Yeah. You're never gonna be able to speak your truth. Be you, and you will attract the right people to you. I wanted to share my tips for handling criticism. I think that everybody who is on social media these days who chooses to share their beliefs, their opinions, even their humor is going to be misunderstood. So my tips for dealing with criticism is to first, when you recognize what's going on, to not emotionally respond, but instead to take that to trusted advisors. I usually like to talk to three different trusted advisors. I have a very, very small circle of people in my life whose opinions I really value and really respect and if they were to bring something to my attention, I would really look into it deeply. And their word means a lot to me in my life. So I've identified those people in my life and when I have instances of haters, or sometimes not even haters, sometimes people with really good hearts that simply misunderstand me, I take it to those trusted advisors and talk about it. And for me, what that does is, number one, it helps me to receive constructive criticism and to really ask myself, what is my part in this? Because whether it's a an argument with a loved one or a friend or something, it's not always the other person's fault. I always ask, what is my part in this? And then I have the free choice and the will to choose to do something different. So if I decide to do something different in order to create a different result and that's my choice but I also have the free choice to say it's unfortunate that people misunderstand me or have a misconceived idea about me but I'm gonna choose to be me anyways so that kind of helped me in my process of handling criticism and I just it was a real raw conversation that I was having so I figured I would show a little bit of it to you guys and also just share how I process through my own criticism and the hate that I receive which is very very minimal to the amount of love that I get I would say the love is like probably 90 97% and <laughs> the hate maybe like 3% or something but I always like to just self-reflect and take personal responsibility for whatever my part is in the manner and then I also exercise my free will and my free choice to just take the best next step of how I want to show up for myself for other people and the decision that I have always made and that I will continue to make is to just simply be me and to be all of me and to be okay if people misunderstand me and hate me and to be okay if people understand me and still hate me at the end of the day life's too short so I encourage you to be you because I'm gonna be me I know it's hard sometimes I know it's hard receiving the backlash but I think life's just too short to be anything else other than unapologetically yourself even if people don't understand your humor and your sarcasm and things like that it's okay because there's other people that will understand it and will love you for it so I'm gonna be me you be you. I'm gonna wrap up the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this YouTube video, make sure to throw a thumbs up. Make sure to comment below. Give me some feedback. Talk to me. Let this be like a two-way street. You know, I want to hear your feedback on it. Any thoughts that you guys have and suggestions for future videos. Before I filmed this video, I actually went through the comments and I was trying to get an idea of like, okay, what do people want to see? So your comments really do help me and I take them into account when I'm choosing to pick up the camera and choosing what I record next. So I would love to hear your feedback on it. I love you guys. Thank you so much much for the support. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!